Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the BSA Lightning SE brake barrel springer on test. But before that, we're back out hunting with Andy Watkins. We're here at the farm once more, just doing a little bit of shooting and there's quite a lot of game around here that the farmer once shot, mainly being pigeons, squirrels, uh, the odd rabbit but he's not so fussed on those, and jackdaws and crows. There seems to be quite a lot of pigeons around today so that's what we might target. Uh, the rifle we're using is this little puppy, literally. It's a Cometa Orion and this is a bullpup and it's one of the shortest bullpups I've actually ever used. Um, cocking mechanism on the back fits a magazine in there, um, nice and short, nice and compact so hopefully when we're stalking in and out of the woodlands um, and in and out of the vegetation it'll be nice and compact just to keep by me without uh, worrying about catching it on trees and stuff like that. This rifle has a Richter optic scope and it's held on just with some sports match uh, medium mounts for weaver rail use so hopefully we'll be able to put this little combo to good use today and bag ourselves a few pigeons. There's also a golf course permission that I'm planning to go to after this in about an hour um, and I've been told there's a ton of rabbits on there so we'll head over there and uh, see if we can shoot a couple for the groundskeeper. Let's get to it, see if we can get something. With two locations to hit in just a few hours Andy is eager to put the super compact Orion to the test. So. Donning a face veil for improved concealment, he's quickly into stealth mode and away on his reins. The pigeons have clearly got a hold on this permission and Andy doesn't take long to clock his quarry. As I've previously said before, one of the main problems is pigeons and there's a couple around us, there's a few on the telephone wire there and there's a few in these trees just above here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to park myself down here and I'm just going to wait, um, probably in the sitting position because that's what I find most comfortable, that's what I've done the most of and hopefully a pigeon will show itself and we'll get a clean shot off and the range here, I've measured it, it's about, about 40 odd yards um, to the furthest trees and 25 yards to the nearest one so well within range of this capable little rifle uh, so just going to park ourselves down here now just moved a little further back into the hedge I uh, didn't really have a lot of cover sat where I was so I'm literally just two yards back and this, this offers me a little bit more shelter and a bit more concealment Pigeons come in, it's at a fair angle, but I know it's gettable. It's about 20, 28 yards, I'd say, so a bang on shot for this rifle. Uh, just pretty much exactly where I've zeroed. It's on a bit of an incline as well, so I might have to aim a little lower, but it should be fairly straightforward. The Richter scope comes with flip up lens covers. And Andy's just remembered to flip his up.
well, that was quite a nice little shot. He just presented himself nicely. From where the camera was, you couldn't see the head, but from where I was, you just about could. I aimed for the neck in anticipation for the pellet to rise and strike the pigeon in the head. But um, if not, then it will just hit him straight in the neck and it's a clean kill anyway. Let's pick that one up. And he's hoping to get more than just the one this evening. But every pigeon shot does the farmer a service, as this one demonstrates. Well here we have that pigeon and as you can see that's one of the reasons why we're shooting them, it's still got grain in its mouth. It's turning a bit yellow now so I probably won't be all that long before uh, it gets taken in. But um, I'm not really a farmer so I don't know I don't know much about the crop. However, I do know that pigeons love it and the farmer doesn't love the pigeons loving it. Um, but that, that one there looks like it was a, a neck shot so the pellet did just fly straight and um, hit him square, but he just saw it was stone dead on the floor and a little pile of feathers. It's just so we like to do it and um, yeah, really good. Anyway, I can hear some pigeons behind me, so I'm just gonna have a gentle walk back towards the direction that we came from in the hope for another one. Um, time's pushing on a bit now, so I think it'll be soon time to uh, head over to the other new permission and see if we can bag ourselves a rabbit. But before he heads off after those rabbits, it looks like Andy is in with another chance at the woodies. So that pigeon I heard is just round the corner of this tree. I'm going to manoeuvre myself out, again get into my favourite position, the sitting position, and try and take it out. It looks like a fair way off, I wouldn't be surprised if it's over 50 yards. Uh, but I am confident in the uh, performance of this, and I reckon it's a doable one. So, yeah, he's still there. Though confident in his kit and abilities, Andy's taking no chances. So he ranges his quarry, then checks the aim points he's cleverly marked on the back of his rangefinder. And with the pigeon seemingly oblivious to Andy's stalking, he can take the time to place his shot precisely. It was clearly a clean kill, and reviewing the footage confirms this. But try as he might, Andy can't locate the shot bird. Well, I've had a good dig round for that pigeon, but it's so dense in here with undergrowth, I don't think I'm going to find it. I am 99% sure that it's stone dead. Um, you saw the amount of feathers that came off it, and how quickly it dropped, and it just fell like a rock off camera as well. We've had two pigeons, one retrieved, one not retrieved. Now it's time for me to head to the golf club. Um, the game groundsman will show me down, show me around, and um, yeah, see if we can get a rabbit. Um, and we'll we'll do a bit more. So let's head off. Well, I'm here all to myself now. Um, the greensman has just gone and the, the caretaker and I'm just going to have a little walk around. I don't have much time now, I've got to be getting back. Um, but we're just going to stalk around this, around this uh, uh, clubhouse and see if we can find anything. Andy's soon in action on the golf course, but it's not eagles or albatrosses he's after, but rabbits. Staying observant, he comes across an opportunity. It's not a rabbit, but yet another pigeon. Still, he's not about to turn it down. I've been walking around for a little while, um, just milling around. There's not been a great deal, um, so I didn't film it because there's nothing to see. But there's a pigeon up in a, a fir tree, and I'm going to see if I can get it. I think, I'm not 100% sure on the range. I'll give it a laser now and uh, have a look. Well within range, about 25 yards.
again, a nice shot there. So let's go and retrieve that pigeon now. Well, there we have it. I went for a heart shot, 25 yards, and it absolutely rolled over. Really nice shot. Um, I think that'll be, that'll be it for today. I've had quite a good bag. I've had a few shots off camera, um, but it's getting a bit dark now. I need to go home and have some tea. It's 20 past nine, and I'm a bit hungry. <laughs> Often the way, reason why I cut my hunting out is a little bit short. Maybe I should bring a cereal bar next time. So uh, let's head back to the car now and tally up what we've had all together. So this is the end bag. A couple of the pigeons you've seen on camera. But I'm really happy with that. Rifle performed nicely. Um, got a rabbit in the bag, so that's kept the groundsman happy. Um, yeah, but there is loads of rabbits to be had here, so I think maybe a return trip with the night vision might be a good idea. A decent bag for Andy and the Cometer Orion bullpup in the end there. And now it's the Air Gun Show news. This is the Airgun Show News. The Game Fair is now just a fortnight away. Country Sport's biggest celebration comes to Hatfield House on the 28th to the 30th of this month, and some of the biggest names in the airgun business will be there. Air Arms, Crossman, FX, Stoger, Virac, and Night Sight are among the big brands exhibiting, plus all of the big shooting organisations, a host of retailers, and, of course, an extensive airgun range. Egg and Shooter magazine will be there. Come and meet the team behind your favourite air gunning monthly. FAC Air Gunners, you're in good company. The latest statistics show that more people in England and Wales have firearm certificates than at any other time in the last 10 years. The number increased by 1% from last year, and certificate holders also have more guns on average. The median age of a certificate holder is just over 50, but Basque noted that nearly 4,000 under 18s have a certificate of some form. Chairman Peter Glenzer said, learning to shoot early in life teaches both self-control and responsibility towards others. The rules have been published for the new team air gun events being added to the Olympics. In mixed team 10 meter air rifle and pistol, each team member has half an hour to fire 25 qualifying shots. Pairs scores are then added together and the top eight proceed to the semis. These follow a progressive elimination format until just four teams are left. Medal matches are then decided on a match play format. Shoot a better shot than your opponent and get a point. First to seven points wins. And finally, the new issue of Egg and Shooter magazine is on sale now. Packed with the best air gunning tips and tricks you'll find anywhere, this issue's got a comprehensive guide to shooting more accurately, from judging point of impact to zeroing properly to choosing the right reticle. Then the team heads into the field to put their newfound knowledge to the test and bag some bunnies. Plus, there's a guide to getting the most out of springers, a roundup of junior air rifles, and the chance to win a 10-shot Gamo Maxim Elite. Pick up Egg and Shooter in newsagents or head to myfavouritemagazines.co.uk. That was the Egg and Show News. BSA has been making quality spring-powered air rifles for generations. The range has seen a lot of advancements over recent years and this is a fine example of a modern BSA Springer. It's the Lightning in SE Geiss. It's a full-powered brake barrel with a price tag of £290. The first thing to strike me about the Lightning SE is just how well made it appears to be. The finish of the metalwork is extremely neat and engineering is very tidy throughout. One thing I really like about this little brake barrel is that there are no disconcerting rattles when you give it a shake. It's not a very scientific test, but I find it far more reassuring than a brake barrel gun that rattles and jangles every time you move it. This is an adult sized air rifle, but it is fairly compact and its carbine barrel keeps length down to just under a metre. Unscoped, it tips the scales at a pretty trim 3.5 kilos. Those proportions make for a very manageable, very pointable air gun. The Lightning actually handles very well, and much of that can be attributed to the design of its ambidextrous beech stock. 
It doesn't look particularly fancy, but it makes for very comfortable shooting. The cheek support is high enough to ensure good alignment between eye and scope, and the ventilated rubber butt plate helps to absorb what little recoil there is. It looks to me like this pistol grip has more of a rake to it than on previous models, and that's certainly an improvement. I also really like the thumb scallop that's been cut into the stock behind the pistol grip, which makes it comfortable to shoot thumb up. The stock is neatly finished with tidy panels of checkering on either side of the forend and pistol grip. The Lightning SE comes with BSA's cold hammer forged barrel, which has a proven accuracy pedigree. And you can't help but notice that large volumetric silencer on there. Apart from looking great, it also does a brilliant job of hushing down the muzzle blast. And that isn't always the case when you put a moderator on a spring powered air rifle. That silencer also serves as something to hold on to when cocking the gun. Even with that relatively short barrel, the cocking stroke is extremely slick. Loading is direct to the breech and there's a very secure lockup when you snap the barrel back into position. And it's not just the cocking stroke that's impressed me. The smoothness of the firing cycle is quite exceptional. The 2.2 caliber test gun is turning out a muzzle energy of around 11 foot pounds, yet there's very little felt recoil. The firing cycle feels fast and what little kick there is comes straight back into the shoulder. This Springer doesn't come with open sights because it's designed for scope use. The rails feature a raised block that you attach your mounts to. It offers a reasonable amount of clamping space and has been drilled to accept a recoil pin or a screw to prevent the kick from the spring and piston action from shaking your scope off zero. The trigger setup on this Lightning is very good, certainly compared with older models that I've used. It's a two-stage adjustable unit with a lightly curved blade with a flat grooved front edge. Straight from the box, this one has a light first stage that comes to an obvious stop before breaking very positively. The second stage is a little heavy, but there's no discernible creep and it's very predictable. As far as the safety goes, it's a pretty basic manual unit that's well positioned just above the trigger. The gun's safe when it's in the rear position and you thumb it forwards when you want to shoot. I think that's most of the Lightning SE's main points covered. Let me show you what it shoots like. Well, there's no denying that it's accurate. That's a five shot group at 25 meters. We've got a very light breeze today. As I said before, the cocking stroke is really nice and slick and that smooth firing cycle certainly makes for precise shooting as long as you do your bit. So that's the BSA Lightning SE. It's a well-priced, no-nonsense brake barrel springer that's actually surprisingly refined to shoot. It's also great fun to shoot, and it's got the power and accuracy to tackle live quarry out to mid-range. It is another great offering from BSA.
That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through our gun membership.